What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Youth and Fellowship Testimony Tuesdays. Sorry, Testimony Thursdays. It's your host, Misha Glufield. I'm sorry we thought we took about a couple weeks hiatus. Um, and we're back on. We are back on today. So we have Jesse Mukayana, which will be joining us today. Just waiting for him to join the live. So he's just going to tell his story a little bit. The struggles he went through, you know, how he was able to find God. And just like his current stage, you know, where he is in life right now. So we'll have Brother Jesse that will tune in um, to his testimony today. So I'll just be waiting for him uh, to pop on. Let's see if I can get him on here. There we go. Hey, hey, hey. Perfect. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? I am blessed. How you doing? I'm doing good. Glory to God. So, uh, um, Usually how this is going to work is just I'm going to introduce um, mm -hmm. you and then you can introduce yourself and then you, I, I'm going to ask you a few questions here and there. You can just go and flee, free flow with this testimony. So I'm just going to start. So welcome, guys, to another episode of uh, Youth and Fellowship Testimonial Thursdays. Today we have a very, very special guest, Jesse, um, a passionate man of God who just loves God. Uh, has also been a, a mentor for me in my life uh, with many different things. Jesse has really displayed a lot of humility in his life. Um, I know we took a little bit of a hiatus from the testimonies, but we're back today and we're going to start with some fire with Jesse. So uh, Jesse, if you can uh, introduce yourself a little bit, where you're from, just a little bit of history about yourself before we get to the testimony. Go ahead. Awesome. It's like, it's like I can hear myself back. Can you? Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure where that I don't hear that from here. Okay. But I'm 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 just uh I'm just gonna go. I'm I i can not hear myself, but it's okay. Okay. Well, my name is Jesse Mukanya, mm -hmm. originally from Congo. And uh I came in US uh since two thousand eight. And um since then I've just been working and I went to school. And uh, I never finished school. <laughs> and so um, I just been serving God. And uh, it has been um, a good journey that I can say, a good journey. And I'm excited to be here tonight to share about what God has done for me. And I know that um, it will completely touch someone's heart today. And uh, I'm excited. And uh, just let me know how it goes. And uh, if I'm talking too much, you just stop me. <laughs> no, it's okay. There's never too much talking for the things of God. But thank you. We appreciate you having here. For many of you guys don't know, Jesse's famous for his lives. He goes on Facebook Lives often. Um, spreads a lot of wisdom. I've tuned into a couple of them. So if you guys want after this testimony, you can follow him, whatever you want to do. Um, he's just truly a man of God after God's own heart. It's kind of like David, if you guys know the history of David in the Bible. So, Jesse, the first thing um, I want to ask is pretty much um, now why – give us a little history of before you were a Christian to when you became to when you became a Christian. You don't have to go all the way to the end, but just how that developed over your years. Why, like, how, why did you decide to become a Christian? Okay, so I, I grew up in a Christian family. Uh, my dad is a pastor. And um, so I grew up with this uh, environment of, you know, just being in the church every single time, uh, singing in the choir. That was back home in Congo. But, you know, doing all that, it, it doesn't make you uh, a Christian, you know? Uh, and so everything, it really makes sense to me um, the day that really Christ came and found me, the day that he really made his, he, himself like real to me. 
and that uh, that happened uh, 2011. In 2011, here in the U.S., and uh, it was on the 11th, 2011, and uh, the 11th month. Mm. So number one, it's like my favorite in um, everything because it, it was a one, 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 one. Amen. And so that was when the turnaround uh, just happened in my life. And uh, I was very young, in a young age. You know, when, when you, did, uh, you decided to walk with Christ in a young age, you face so many challenges, um, especially if you don't have people that are, uh, are there for you to, to encourage you, to correct you. And, you know, as a single man, as a young kid, I faced some challenges uh, with friends, like, you know, giving your life in a young age, meaning you are abandoning the life of, like, you know, club, drinking, all that you can think of. And uh, it was it was a moment that it was very challenging for me. And uh, from there, uh, I'm not going to say that I was, I was uh, better at it. And that's why I'm about to share today, which I truly believe it would touch someone's heart. Amen. 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 Uh, definitely yeah. powerful. Um, the next question I want to ask, and from this question, you can just completely go through now, that was the point at which in 2011, where you felt like, you know, you gave your life to God and started your journey. Now, can you, can you kind of run us through what that looked like, your journey from where you started, some of the obstacles that you went through and, and how you were able to overcome them? Okay, so I want to start with this. Tonight, I'm not sharing the, uh, uh, there is no power in a testimony. Hmm. But there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay? So, it's not about my testimony. It's really about what God has done for me. Mm. That's what is powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want you guys to look at me as someone that went through stuff and came out of it. But I want you guys to look that it was a person that God took through stuff and took out. Mm of some stuff, you know? And so my journey, when I, when I, when I decided to give my life to Jesus Christ, <clears throat> excuse me, it was a moment that it was the best, best feeling that I never felt over my life, mm -hmm. a best decision that I made in my life. And by making that decision, I noticed that it did open some doors Mm -hmm. over my life that I felt that I was exposed. It, I always say, I think it was better for me not to, to believe in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The day that I did believe I decided to give my life to Christ. That's when everything, it just, I start losing friends. But to gain something powerful, which is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so 2011, when I gave my life to Christ and then my journey, I keep going back. My thing, it was, I was keep going back, you know, I was keep going back, keep going back. I will be on fire serving God, but I find myself keep going back. I find myself keep going back in the same mess that I did not like. And I remember one time I was so tired of this life of drinking and doing drugs and you know, uh, sleeping around. I know many people that have been through the things that I've been through, and some of them are still going through what I am going through, what I did went through, okay? Let me say one more time. I truly believe there are people out there are still going through the things that I've been through. But the thing that it made me to come out, it was not me. It was the power of Jesus Christ Mm. empower me to come out of that mess. Mm -hmm. And uh, so take 2011, 2012, all this life, I would say it was the season that I can say, if I say it like this, I can tell you the terrible season of my life. It was 2016. In 2018, 
16 to 18, it was one of my worst year of my life, like personally. But now I can say it wasn't that worst year of my life. Fleshly, I can say it's worst year of my life because it was a year that I completely turned off. I did not want to serve God. I did not want to do anything with God. But let, let me tell you something, my brother. When you have something that God has placed inside of you, mm. there is nobody can take that away from you. Mm. When God called you to serve him, it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what you've been through. God wants us to knowledge him in the midst of everything that we're going through. Amen. And so imagine since 2011, it took me to really settle with God to really completely understand God to really grow spiritually when uh, 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 next year, last year, I mean, last year, it was my turn around. Hmm. Last year, it was, which, which I can call my year, that I can never forget. Because imagine since 2011 until 2018, many people, let me tell you this, this is what I want to encourage someone out there. The moment that I, I, I came to understand God has some things that he cannot do anymore. Mm. But I do have something that I can do. Mm. So, what do I want to say? There are things God cannot change anymore because he already did it. Hmm. 2019, when I understand that I've been wasting my time to pray, God, I don't want to go back to my old life. I know many of us, we pray those kind of things. That God, I don't want to go back there. God, I don't want to go back there. God, I don't want to go back there. And when I have noticed that that prayer, I don't think it makes sense to God's ears. It took me to understand what God has done for me, for me to knowledge and to accept the life that God has given to me. Mm. And that took... <laughs> All that year for me to really understand that the power of God will manifest in our life when we understand it. Mm. The power of God, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, it happens in our life or we have a new life that God has given to us the moment that we knowledge and we walk according to God's word. And so 2019, it was a year that it was a turnover over my life. Because look, many people that look at me right now, they enjoy what they are listening from me right now. But if I tell you about two years ago, you would not even want to sit this way and to listen to me talking. You see, what I have been through no one will never understand because this is my story. And through my story, all I can tell you is this. I'm about to say something today that uh, a lot of people, a lot of people will be like, what? You did that? Yes. <laughs> but I'm not glorifying sin. Okay, so I was very addicted to porn. Hmm. Very addicted. Like, I, I don't know if anyone else was addicted like I was. I was worse than the person that introduced me to those things. Because hmm. the person that even introduced me, the, my friends that introduced me to that, I remember sometimes they would tell me, man, you... You got to calm down. So understand I went through a season of 
really when I, I, I saw myself that there was no hope for me. And I look at myself one day that I can see myself in the hand of the enemy because the enemy was really telling me everything to do. Like the love wasn't there anymore. And the way I would talk to people, it's just going to be so rude. And uh, when I started doing drugs, I was very addicted. And this is what I remember. In a young age, something happened to me. Something happened that uh, I was around seven years old. And my aunt forced me to have sex with her. It's mm. mm. seven years old. Mm. The Bible says that the enemy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God came to give life and life more abundantly. And what that happened to me in a young age, growing up, I thought it was, uh, it wasn't real. That's me, like in my brain. I thought like it, was, it wasn't real. But I noticed that growing up, the way I was growing up, it wasn't not good. I was not normal, if you understand. Like, I knew myself there was something wrong with me. Because you know what? I was dating people that are older than me. I, w I wasn't attractive to people around my age. And the people that I was hanging out with, I was hanging out with all the people than the people around my age. And I remember my friends, they're like, why you never be attractive to uh, girls like 20 and stuff like that. I was 18, I was dating a lady that she was 30. Hmm. I was 18, I was dating uh, ladies that they, they, they're 29, older than me, like we're talking about 12, 10. That started since I was 17. So all my life, I grew up with this desire of sex, lust, even when I was serving God, so powerful. But since there was a door that was open over my life, every time I will find myself in the same place that I was two years ago. Even when God was using me in a, in, in, in a mighty way, like traveling. And, uh, you know, I, ha I have a ministry, Kingdom Revival. But all that, I was still, still not moving with God. And I remember one time, I stopped going to church for six months. And I, I, I went back, like, doing drugs. And, you know, I was, I was coked out. And I came back home, and I'm, I'm feeling it in my heart that I, I need to, to tell someone about what I've been through. Like, because that was so mad. When I would think about it, it would make me mad. So I did everything not to think about it, you know? You know? <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I remember I went to my mom, and I told my mom everything the way it happened. And when my mom listening and she was like something happened to you in a young age i can really believe what happened to you in a young age and let me tell you that was the door that the enemy opened in my life since i was seven years old and so a lot of times people you are laughing at someone or you are making fun of someone serving god but they keep going back in the same stuff sometimes it's not the fault sometimes it is the things that happen to them in a young age Sometimes it's what their dad has done to them, has malice them, has uh, touched them in the wrong way. Sometimes it's the way the stepbrother, okay, and what he has done to them. Sometimes it is that man that slept with the man, but he's so ashamed to say that I slept with the man because uh, uh, they're going to call me gay. And let me tell you, you look into a man, that I disliked with the man in the ignorant. You look into a man that he, it was 
all of his life he was drugs and nobody knew about it. I wasn't I wasn't a homosexual. I wasn't not attractive to men. And that happened once. Hmm. After doing so much coke, when I wake up in the morning, I was like, what have I done? And let me tell you, that was like a knife in my heart, but I could not feel that knife anymore because I was already numb. Because I remember thinking about that, thinking about it. And when I went to my mom, I told my mom, I said, Mama, this is what happened. And there was like something that got released inside of me. It was like something that released. And uh, in that moment, I thought like, yeah, everything is going to be good. I just told my mom. No. It was like I went down again. And I, I, I did my best to come back to God, but I was feeling so dirty, so nasty. And guess what? It got worse than before. Hmm. I'm not proud of the things that I have done. But this is what I can say. I know why I went through that. Because people enjoy your story. They enjoy you, but they, when they hear your story, they probably don't believe. And I tell people, let me tell you, I never share this with anyone. This is my first time I'm actually sharing this with everybody that you are watching. And the turnaround, it was 2019. When I came to understand this, it's not God going to do it for me anymore. It's I who need to accept what God has done for me. That was the moment my life completely turned around. And right now, there is nothing that I can look I have done it all. There is nothing that I can look behind and say like, oh, yeah, let me go do that. No, I, I, I don't want to go there because I already know how it feels. I know how it tastes. I know that I know it. And so one of the things was always breaking my heart when people would look at me and say, man, that's that, 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 back in the day, that's a good man of God. And then I look at them, I'm like, I don't know. I'm not. I'm going to stuff. And I was so tired of being hypocrite. And guess what? I give up on God. And my family did my family didn't know what was going on with me. My friends, I had friends in, in a church. I did not want to talk with any Christian. I I I I closed everybody because I was like, I know the truth. And I know that I need to be set free, but I need to figure out the way to be set free because I don't want to serve God in serving the word. That's what a lot of people were laughing at me in the past, but they did not understand the things that I was going through. People were laughing at me. You always serve God and go back to your own life. You always say, Jesus, 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 and you come back to your life. But people they didn't know the things that was bringing me back. It was a hook. It was something that was holding me back. And so, but I could not respond to anybody because I was so ashamed to tell people, hey, listen, look, look the things that I'm doing. I just, I just messed up with someone's marriage right now. Like, I just, I just slept with someone's wife right now. I could not say all those things because I don't know how people would take me. And you know what? You're not worse. I want to encourage someone today. Everything that you've been through, God, he's able to change a worse person. Mm. Yep. God, he's able to change the worst person in the world. Because I'm telling you, Meshach, 
If you knew me two years ago, you will not even want to hang out with me. <laughs> mm. Yeah? I was a destroyer. That's, I'm, and I'm not glorifying sin. I'm just telling you the person that I was. And there is no power in my testimony. There is power in the name of Jesus. That's why I'm not trying mm. to put the power in my testimony. There is no power in my testimony. But there is power in the name of Jesus that took me out of that mess. Amen. I'm giving all the power in the name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Amen. I'm transparent. Honest. I know that you know me. You know me now. Honest. Transparent. And I cannot, I cannot never in my life preach about something that I don't live. I can't. Now I can say that I have been set free. I understand what is the freedom of God. Now I can say that, and now I know the meaning of when the Bible says, for I've been crucified with Christ, that I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Now I can glorify the name of Jesus Christ because I know that name. There is power in the name of Jesus. You know, I understand. I, I came to understand that when I was not serving God the way I was, I noticed that there were so many Christians were going through the stuff that I was going through, but they could not speak. They could not say anything because they are scared for people to judge them. Let me tell you, I will, I will prefer for you to, to step down, to, to allow God to, for you to really understand it before you go out there. Because let me tell you, the more you are serving God, you're not reigning. That there are still doors that is open in your life. You never understand. You will be destroyed. Because you're exposing yourself. You are playing. There is demons out there. Spiritually demons. That you're not just talking with people. You will talk with demons without even you knowing. And so the more I was preaching the gospel, the more I was getting, God was elevating my life. But since there was doors that was open over my life, you know what? I could not even enjoy that. Like, I, I would pray for healing for people. People would be healed, but myself, I'm not healed. That's why you see a lot of people that give up on God because they never understand God. That's why I encourage people do not rush to jump into ministry because I am a testimony of that. You know, to all my friends, all my friends in the United States of America, most of my friends, all of my friends that I know, I was the only one that I decided to start walking with God. And you know what? I came to understand one thing that my life, it wasn't not just because of me. I impact so many people's life that a lot of my friends now, they are pastors, evangelists, prophets, traveling around the world, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? I myself never understood what I was doing. Mm. I myself, I will open that Bible in the past. I will tell you everything that God is doing, but I could not see in my own life. I was that person that I would preach about the power of, of, of Jesus Christ. There was power in the name of Jesus, but I myself, I was seeking to know how does that power feel like? How's that healing feels like? Like I will pray for people. People will be healed. Like I see God healing people through me. And that's when I came to understand, oh my God, a dangerous place for a believer to be. It's when you are serving God so mightily, but yourself, you don't even leave that life. Let me tell you, hmm. God will still use you. Yep. God will still use you even when you do not want to turn your life around. But in that day of judgment, you will stay face to face with them. 
I believe in that day, if I did stand face to face with God, if I was in a judgment day, he would tell me, get away from me. I never knew you. You who broke God's law. Hmm. I truly believe that. And so let me tell you. When people find out the things that I have done around my, most of my friends, nobody wanted to talk to me anymore. You know what? That was 2016. And I said, God, I remember I was praying this one day. I said, God, I don't want to wake up the next day. Kill me. I'd rather die than to live this kind of life. I don't want it. And let me tell you, that day, I, I, I slept with my mind like I'm now going to wake up the next day. And when I wake up that morning, I look up and then I say, why did you keep me alive? Why? I don't want to be alive. And you know the voice that I heard? In the midst of all that, God told me, I still love you. Hmm. My God, let me tell someone here, the more the fight, the more the trouble that you are getting, it, is, it, it shows the anointing that you have over your life. Yep, it's true. I came to understand that the reason why the enemy did not like me, the reason why the enemy wanted to do all these things over my life, it was because he knew the anointing and the impact and the life change that I will bring in this world. Hmm. The moment that I understood who I am in Christ Jesus, because let me tell you, I knew the power of God. I knew that God can work, but I didn't know I, I, I didn't know who I am in Christ. I did not see that power for myself. So I was not doubting God, but I was doubting myself. And I truly believe there are many Christians out there that you, you, you're not doubting the power of God, but you are doubting yourself. You don't see it. You can feel it. Let me tell you this. The more the fight that you are getting now, who? When I came to understand that, that I understand the way in 2019, you are looking to a person that since 2011 until 2019, between that, it was, <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It, it. it was bizarre. But let me tell you, God is that God. He will make a way where there is no way. Yep. He mm -hmm. is that God that he will turn your life around. Let me tell you. And this is what I understand. God, we allowed you. God did allow me to go through all that to really break me. Like, literally, I, I did not have anything left in me. Nothing. Like, I was hopeless. I would date, I would date girls think like, you know, they would give me peace, but <laughs> no. It was terrible. Like, nothing would work for me around my friends. So you, like, you know, and uh, I, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. And that was the moment when God, I believe God looked at me. He's like, now you get it. Now you get it. In 2019, I was in Congo when I came here in the in United States of America. And this is what I told God. And I would never, ever in my life, no matter how I feel about it. I, I, I told Satan this. Satan, if you want to do anything in this body, I want yourself to come and take this body and go do your mess. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I will never go back to that old life, even if what I am facing, and I know it with no shadow of doubt, I will never go back. And this is not because of 
I'm just saying it, but because God says, now you get it. Now you understand what does it mean to be a Christian. Never go back to what you have thrown away. And so when you look at my life, don't glorify me, but glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Man. Don't glorify my testimony, but glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And one thing that I stopped doing, you know, since I messed up a lot of people's life, I did not want to go out and start asking people for apology. Because I already did it once. And you know, you cannot, I cannot go out there to stop facing relationships that I messed up in the past. But guess what? They are watching. And the moment that I understand, I just understand, I'm like, God, this is it right here. This is, this is, this is it. This is my last chance. This is it. And you know what? The more God is elevating my life, the more them, those people, they will start believing in a mighty God. Mm. I understand my life is not really, I, I came to understand that I impact life. And I don't say this in a prideful way. I say this because I understand my, 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 my purpose. That it's not about me be famous. It's not about me being known by a lot of people. It's about me being known by two, three people. Ah. And so let me encourage someone that you are watching. I want to read. I want to read us this. Listen to this. Romans six. Verse 7, the word of God says this. For when we die with Christ, we were, listen, we were set free from the power of sin. Not when we die with Christ, we are now set free from the power of sin. The Bible is talking about past. Tense. The Bible is talking about something that happened 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000 years ago. That the moment that we, we gave our life to Christ, that there is no power of sin over our life. Now it's just the power of God that is working inside of us. Now my life, my life, all I want to see, it is the generation that they have a Fight. That's why I don't, I, I don't, I don't condemn people. You can be going through worse things. Like I look at people, like you know, a lot of times, I believe there are people out there. They, they are ashamed of the things that they've been through. That's why I'm not afraid to talk about the things that I've been through. I'm not afraid to talk about the shame things that I've been through. You know what? Those shame things. It made me who I am today. Yep. You enjoy watching me right now. You enjoy listening to me right now. It was because of what I've been through. Mm -hmm. What God took me through. You enjoy, you know, a lot of times you see a pastor or evangelist or prophet. You see them preaching the gospel with passion. You see them, they are bold. But if they tell you the story, you'll be like, what? I didn't know that. But let me tell you. Your story is very important. You are who you are today because of what you are going through mm. or what you've been through. Don't be afraid if you were bisexual. Don't be afraid if you was homosexual. Don't be afraid if you dislike with men. Don't be afraid if you slept with women. Only you can now look at your life back and say, God, thank you. Um. And so, when I come across someone that have a desire of sleeping with me, I can look at them and I'm not the spirit. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When I meet someone that they, 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 they are doing drugs, I can look at them and not the spirit straight up. 
when uh, I, I, I'm talking to someone that they're going to divorce, I can look at them and detect the spirit because God allowed me to go in that direction. Do you know that it happened a lot of times? If you drive in that road so many times, now you know how to drive without even looking. If it's your first time driving in that road, you're probably going to be lost a little bit. But the more you're driving in that road, the next time that you come, you're going to start remembering things without even looking at your GPS. So let me tell you, mm -hmm. God is taking you to a way that when you come out of it, you go back to it again, you can never look at uh, uh, the GPS again. God, please help me. God, please help me. GPS, please help me to find my way back. No, it's not about that anymore. Now you can tell people that I know this way. I know this direction. I know if you go this way, it will take you there. I know if you go in this direction, it will take you there. That's when you see that you will meet someone that they are going through stuff. You know exactly what to tell them. If I, if you meet someone that with his alcoholic, you know when you are talking to them uh, that there is a power in the name of Jesus. That God that set me free, he's the same God that can set you free. Oh, my sister, my brother, let me tell you, it's not too late to God. It is not too late. I am a testimony of that. Let me tell you, the people that they don't believe in you, it's not your place to go and confess them, but it is your place to go deeper with God. Because I understand one thing. I came to understand that God, the way he blessed my life right now, God took me from my enemy. God took me from my enemy. You know what? My enemy was laughing at me. They thought it was over for me. They thought like they got me. They thought like I cannot serve God anymore. They thought like I cannot even say the name of Jesus. Many of them are waiting for me to go back to my old life. Many of them are wishing for me to have a terrible life. But let me tell you, the Bible says them. That God, he's, playing, he's placing a table in front of your enemy. Yep. I want to tell someone tonight that, that God wants to elevate your life in front of your enemies. God, he wants to bless you in front of your enemies. God wants to bless you in front of the, those things that was holding you back. Mm -hmm. God wants to bless you in front of the same people that were laughing at you because you were going through things, but they didn't know what was holding you back. They didn't know the reason. So I want to tell someone, do not worry. God has your back. But this is what I want to encourage someone today. There is things that, yes, we say that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is things that God cannot do anymore. Many of you probably are like, what? God cannot do anymore? Yes, you know why he cannot do it. What God cannot do, he cannot come again. He cannot again send his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for our sin. Mm. Yeah. God cannot do it anymore. God cannot come and, uh, and say again, by, by my stripes again, to, Jesus cannot get beat again because he already went through that. It is your time to do something. It is your moment to stand up and to make a step. Let me tell you, nobody lay hands on me because a lot of people, they're like, uh, we, you need to go get a deliverance. Let me tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to tell someone today, you do not need someone to lay hands on you. You do not need a prophet. You do not need a pastor to lay hands on you. God does not want your pastor, that pastor to get credit to say, I was the one that I prayed for them. That I was the one that I did it. God, he wants to be the one to say, I was the one that I took him out of that. 
You want people to lay hands on you to be delivered. Let me tell you today, the devil, he is a liar. The devil has been lying to you a lot to say that you're delivered. So you need to talk to a prophet. You need to talk to a pastor. You need to talk to a member of the church. You need to talk to someone that will tell you that is not true. It can be true in some parts, but it's not really true. Let me tell you, the real deliverance will take place the day that you understand your purpose here on earth. The real deliverance, because let me tell you, many people, they are getting delivered, but they keep going back to the same thing because they never understand the purpose here on earth. Mm. There are many people that they are being prophesied right now, but you look at the life, it's still the same since 2016. You see people, 10 pastors can be gathered around to pray for you to be set free. But let me tell you, there is no power that can really set you free. When you believe in what God has said about your life. Mm -hmm. Nobody lays hand on me to be delivered. You know what? Deliver me. Deliverance, it is in your hand. Mm. <laughs> deliverance, that we hear deliverance. Sometimes we think like it is it, it, it is God again coming to deliver you. Like it's like God is really living his throne to just come and deliver you. Can you imagine that? Like the, the Bible says that he's sitting there to prepare a place. So how come that God, the same God that he's saying, he'll go into prepare a place, he will come again to rescue you. Now, let me tell you something right here. I know I'm twisting someone's mind right now because this is, this is something that I understand. That God, he said, he's preparing the place. So he said, I will leave you the Holy Spirit, which will be a confidence, which will be a help for you. He will reveal your things. Hallelujah. He will help you. So we see that God, he did his job, and the Bible said he's resting. In the seventh day, the Bible says that he's resting. And Jesus Christ went through everything. The Bible said in that day in the cross, he said, it is finished. Mm -hmm. And we see the Holy Spirit. The Bible, I never see when the Bible, it said that the Holy Spirit is finished. I never see anywhere in the Bible, the Holy Spirit said it's done. But the Holy Spirit is always with you. The Holy Spirit always works with you. The Bible says that the same Spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of you. That's right. And so when I understand that I don't need to call upon the name of Jesus there's a lot of things that God changed through my life to really understand because I'm telling you, I saw the lifestyle of a lot of Christians and I, 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 I can tell you, that's why you see God put this amendment to me to work hard for the kingdom of God because there's a lot of people that got it wrong. The moment that I understand that I don't need to call upon the name of Jesus but I just need to say, Holy Spirit, be activate over my life. Holy Spirit, I want to understand you. Holy Spirit, I want to understand you because you're not sitting up there, God. You say that you live inside of me. So why am I calling to God that is here? Hmm. And so that deliverance, it took place because I didn't know this, that I have the key. I didn't know that I had the key. And let me tell you what happens. When we pray for deliverance, this is what happened. We go before God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When we pray, God, set me free. We bow down and God is saying, my son, stand up. Stand up. God is offering a key. God wants you and now to go do it. Hmm. You know why he doesn't want to do it anymore? He is the king. He is a mighty God. I understand God respects his own word. That's why every time when we come before God, we remind him of his own word. He cannot resist his own word. And so remember when God says that God gave us a green light to go and to, to pray for the sick and to, 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 
to really be the light of this world, to do things he said you will do more than what I have done. So when we pray for deliverance, God is saying, stand up. Here's the key. I want you to go do it. I want you to go set your life free. This is what I'm hearing. God is telling someone today, it is you that you will set yourself free. God is with you. The Bible is saying not by might, not by power, but it is by the spirit of a living God. So that spirit, it's giving us a green light to go unlock some things in the spirit. And so God, when we pray, God set me free. God is saying, here's the key. Go do it. But you know what? I would not say that I wasted my life to wait on God to come and set me free. But I would say, I think it took long for me to really understand it. God wanted me to understand it, that it's not him that he's going to come and set me free. But it is I myself I need to understand what he says about me. That he said that you are righteous. That he said that you are, you are my servant. That you are my son. That you are my daughter. That I love you. I will never forsake you or abandon you. I will always be by your side. That's what you see in the Bible. God will keep repeating to Moses that I say I will never abandon you. I will always be with you. God will always do that. He reminds us that I will never leave you alone. But you know what? A lot of us, we still think that uh, we're still alone. And so this is what I always say. When I came to understand that it is I who need to accept what God has says about me. Now, I want to tell someone out there, maybe you're going through some stuff right now. You're waiting on God to come do it for you. God says this. Same power that rose Jesus from the dead. I don't know if, I don't know if someone understands this word. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> I don't want to compare you with, I don't want to say that you are Jesus, okay? Because a lot of people, it, it, that would be blasphemy, right? But let me tell you. So you want to tell me the same power that rolled Jesus Christ from the dead, it lives inside of you and now. And that power just need to be unleashed. Mm. That power, it's waiting for opportunity. Did, did you, uh, have any of you guys watched the movie of tra Transformers or Transform, that, that movie, what, 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 what is it called? Transformers, I've seen it before. Yeah, Transformers. Mm -hmm. You've seen it before? Mm -hmm. There is one part that I like about that movie. It was when that blue, I don't know the name of them, but the blue uh, uh, wheeler. Optimus. Yeah. It was, so he was like, he was like in, in chain, okay? So he knew, he knew that I am the one that I'm going to go save them. So he had to do everything to be set free so he can come and save those people. To save my friends. <laughs> and so let me tell you one thing. That the same thing with God, okay? God was sitting, God, God is sitting on this throne. And he's saying to you tonight. That is, no, I, I, I take it from that experience like. You need to be unleashed. You need to go, and because there is an assignment, there is a, there is a, there is a, a, a an assignment that is waiting on you to do. There is a, there is something that God is wanting you to come and do. But you know what? 
the reason why he understands because he understands that there was something that was placed inside of him that he would come and save his friends. Let me tell you. Now, that same power that he lives inside of you, it's waiting for opportunity to, for you to stop preaching the gospel so many people can be saved. That power that inside of you, it's waiting to be activated. So you can go out there to start praying for healing over people. Now, it is not you that you are doing it, but it is the power that lives inside of you. It's waste of time for a believer that you serve God so mightily. That you know the power of God, but you don't know yourself. It's waste of energy when you serve God so power. Like you can see people, life is getting changed and impacted by yourself. You never understand. That's the worst place to be in life. And I want to encourage someone today. Don't rush to serve God. God, he doesn't, he doesn't care about ministry. Let me say it one more time. God, he did not come to die for ministry. God came to die for you and I. God cares about you more than the ministry. God cares about your life more than the ministry. Because when you are sick, you cannot do anything. That's why we have so many Christians are giving people the things that themselves they don't have it. That's why we see the kingdom of God is getting destroyed because we have believers that are living double life but are, are, are still preaching the gospel. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, I've been there and I know it. I know the feeling. And I'm telling you, that is not a good place to be. If you're still living in, 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 in a, a mindset of, let me tell you now, let me tell you now, let me tell you. People will say, well, if God set you free, you, you, you're going to go back to it. Let me tell you. No, no, no. That is not the word of God. That is not the word of God. That is the word of man. Let me tell you. When God set you free, you are free indeed. Mm -hmm. When God sets you for you are free indeed. They, 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 there is no more feelings. There is no more uh, 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 you going back there. No, 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 no. You know the reason why you want to go back there? Because <laughs> this may be personal. The reason why you still feeling to go back there because it is you that want to go back there. And today I want to tell you how a believer, how I was keep going back to my old life. And this is what I understand. That your past, it is not the problem. Your present, it is the problem. Mm. Your past, let me repeat it one more time. Your past isn't the problem. It is the, your present, it is the problem. Do not pray God to change your, your past, your mindset of your past, but pray God to change your way of doing things that it brings you back in your past. Because your past is just waiting for opportunity to be activated again. Mm -hmm. So your past, it doesn't even hold you back. Because that's what the enemy wanted me to understand, that my past was holding me back. But I came to understand, it wasn't my past that was holding me back. It was the things that I was doing, it will always bring me to my past. Mm. It was my way of thinking that was always bringing me back to my past. It was the way I would speak, the people that I was hanging out with, movies that I was watching, that it would bring me to a sexual sin. Because the people, they don't know that the music that you are listening, it can bring you back in your past. The, the way you say you keep drinking, it can bring you back in your past. If you know that you're not strong, if you know that God, he did not finish with you yet, take your time. Your past is just waiting for opportunity to be activated. 
your present it is the problem when you take care of your present you don't need to worry about your past when you take care of you now you don't need to worry about what's going to the past when you take care of you now your way god is giving god give me a new life now it is i who accept the life that god has given to me to walk according to god to that new life to speak the way that new life want me to speak that's what the bible say do not be confirmed by the things of this word but be transformed by renewing of your mind renew as god to renew your mind your problem it is your present mindset it is not renewed that's why you find yourself going back to depression that's why you find yourself going back to anxiety that's why you find yourself going back to uh, sexual immorality that's why you find yourself going back to the homosexual feeling that's why you find yourself going back to all those bisexual whatever that you call it all those things that is demonic you find yourself going back to it because your present it is the problem I understand when I change my ways of thinking. I don't have I don't have I have families, but I don't have friends. Now, a lot of you probably going to say like, "What? This is the reason why I I took a decision according to God not to have a friend." And I'll tell you why. I came to understand that it was my destruction, it was friends. I don't have I don't have people I go to work. I come home. Talk to my fiance. I'm back home. I go to church. I come home. Go to work. I come home. If you are my friend, all we do is we talk on the phone. Why is that? Because I understand what God has placed inside of me. The more I'm doing that it's a distraction for me so I will cut it off. because I understand the anointing what God has put inside of me that's why I say I don't have friends I have families anybody that is my friends we talk over the phone never hang, we I decide not to hang out anymore I decided not to go to a uh, a uh, uh, like gather get together anymore no I that's I decide that because that, that when God revealed it to me where the destruction was coming from i had to change my ways so i cannot go back to that all life because some of you i i truly believe that you have friends every time you get around them the conversation that you guys are having let me tell you you may say that uh yeah i'm listening but i'm not participating let me tell you when someone you are a gossiper when someone comes to you and start gossiping about that person and you don't say anything you don't correct them you don't rebuke them you are participating in that gossiping as well when some of you are cheating to your wife when you you and your friends we call it a normal thing it's a man thing i don't want to have a, a normal thing a man thing when i'm sitting with friends i see all of them they have wives they have fiances they have uh, you know uh, girls that they are talking but all the conversation had to do with all the women i don't want to have that i don't want to have those kind of conversation anymore i would rather lose them to gain what god have for me because let me tell you one thing that i understand people are so afraid to leave their friends for the sake of the gospel let me tell you i am a testimony for that leave your friend for the sake of the gospel they will follow you i am a testimony of that i told you guys early here that to most of my friends that are serving god very powerfully today it was when i took a decision to 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 a to abandon my friends like they will come in for where have you been i say ah oh, man you know i'm not going to be there like you know you guys are serious i cannot hang out with you guys no that's not what i was doing i just say no uh um, god is doing something in my season right now and i want to take opportunity of it that's what's my answer and when they call me i didn't want to hang up and they don't call me anymore i said thank thank you god 
and I know they're watching from too far, but you know what? Most of them, when I was serving God, and most of them just start following the hand of God upon my life. Hmm. And you know what? Through that, most of my friends that they are pastor, every time when I sit with them and they tell me the testimony, and I hear someone, one of my friends, he said, Jesse, you probably don't know this. When I saw the way you were serving God, my God. And it wasn't, it wasn't not me. But when they say, when I saw you serving God, it encouraged me, it empowered me to say, if Jesse can do it, I can do it as well. Mm-hmm. And when I hear that, I give God glory. Let me tell you, my sister, my brother, that you're probably out there watching. You're like, how can I give up to this relationship? That you know it's not glorify the name of Jesus. How can I give up? How can I give up to my friends? Let me tell you, you're not giving up on them. You just understand your season and you are stepping out from that box. You rather uh, 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 you don't want to gain the old things but lose your soul. Many of you, I truly believe, you find yourself in the in the midst of a situation where you have to decide between that relationship and to follow Christ. I feel like a you in a situation to decide between that job and God. I feel like you're in a situation where you are deciding between your friends and God. Let me tell you, choose God. Abandon your old life. Abandon your friends. Follow Christ, and they will follow you. A lot of times I would tell my friend, most of my friends like that, I say, listen, let me tell you one thing. I'm just bold about this gospel. I am so bold. Let me tell you. I tell my friends, what you have, I don't need it. But what I have, you need it. I have the name that is above every other name. What you are doing, we used to do it together. So don't tell me that I'm missing something. I am not missing anything. I don't need what you guys have. Because what you, what, 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 what you guys have, I noticed it did not give me peace. What you guys are doing, I noticed it did not give me joy. It's not that I'm, I, I, I'm talking down to them, but that is just the truth. What, what my friends, we used to do, it did not do anything to me. So why would I still hang out with people or participating to People that everything that we have done, it did not bring anything good to me. You know what? I decided I said no. I'm here with God. And a lot of times people will say, Well, you're so prideful. Why do you say it that way? No. If I was prideful, <laughs> This is why you would know. If I was prideful, my friends would not serve God. <laughs> because they would, they would run away from God. If I was prideful, they would never come to me and sit with me and be like, oh, now we understand. If I was so prideful, they would not even want to be with me together. They would say, you are judging us. You know, none of my friends ever say that you are judging us. Never. Or condemn us. Never. It's just when you understand your purpose. When you understand. Because it's like the day that you are married. It's between you and your wife. And your, your eyes. Your everything. It's about that wife. It's about that husband. It's not about all the women. You know it's like that with God. When we are with God. It's considered like marriage. I don't need to hang out anymore. Like I used to hang out at 12 p.m. I don't need anymore to hang out with people that I know they will take me away. They will, there is something that will come inside of their mouth. It will take me away from God. So because I am in this relationship with God, I need to take care of it. I hope that someone understands. But my brother, I don't know if you have anything else for me. I know I've talked to <laughs> But that's pretty much what I can share with someone out there. And I know that when you are listening, God is doing something right now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No, I didn't even want to cut you off. Um, one thing I wanted to add when you were talking, two things came to my mind. Um, the story of Joseph. 
And if you guys know who Joseph was, Joseph was the youngest of brothers. And out of jealousy, Joseph was sold by his brothers, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's when you talked about, um, you know, going through trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations. Right? Joseph. And where that's come from, 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 where for me, that was come from, where that's 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 went through so much hardship, you know. Uh, Potiphar's wife was trying to get him to, you know, to, to lust after her and everything. You know, he was put in prison. And at the end of the day, you know, he became the governor, you know, of Egypt. And his brothers actually came before him to speak to him, right? Mm -hmm. Not knowing that it was Joseph. And that's why the Bible mm -hmm. says that he will prepare a table for us before our enemies. It is true. Not saying that Joseph's brothers were his enemies, but... In the grand scheme of things, they kind of worked because they sold him. They gave him away, right? They didn't like him. And you even look at the story of the Israelites. God saved the Israelites. The Bible says, you know, don't go back to your vomit, right? It's like when you someone vomits, mm -hmm. don't go back to it. And when he delivered the Israelites from Egypt, um, imagine going through hundreds of years of slavery, whipping, death, everything. God set you free. And then in the next moment, when Moses went up to the, to the mountaintop, they started to rebel. They started to create idols and gold and things like that, knowing from where they came from and how God completely shaved an entire generation of people and they still disobeyed, right? And they were punished, right? The Bible talks about the promised land, the promised land. Why didn't they get there? Because there was a delay. And a lot of times there can be the promises of God, the Bible says are yes and amen. But there can be a delay if we allow ourselves to engage in sin. There can be a delay if we are walking outside of the will of God. God will still be there to pick us up and raise us up, but there can still be a delay. Amen. And I did a teaching last Sunday in my Zoom call talking about the story of um, Peter uh, walking on water, how when, when, when the storm was raging and Peter saw Jesus and, and you know, he was scared. And he says, if you are, you know, who, who you say you are, if you are Jesus, then call me to walk out to the water. Peter walked to the water. You know, he had that faith and God gave him the faith because someone told me and they said, uh, Peter had the faith to walk out to the water. I'm like, Jesus wanted to give him that faith because he called out to him. And when Peter began to walk, he began to sink. Why? He stopped focusing on Jesus. He started focusing on the storms around him, what was going on, and he began to sink. But even when he was still sinking, Jesus was still there to lift him up. And what analogy am I trying to get from that? What I'm saying is that whenever God is always there to give us chances. He gives us faith to do things. The Bible says by faith, we do things, right? And without faith, no man can please God. So like God gives us the faith to do things. And even when we still don't believe in him, God can do a miracle for you and you still not, might not believe in that miracle. Why don't you believe in the reality of that miracle? Because you don't believe in the one who did the miracle for you. A lot of people are looking for a miracle. A lot of people are looking for a blessing, but they're not actually looking for Jesus. And what happens is that we fall into sin we fall into our past life. But the beauty of everything is grace. And that's what I get from your story today, Jesse, is the grace of God. How God has been there for you every step of the way and has used your past right. trials and tribulations as a testimony uh, to share for people on the line. Because obviously, um, this live will be posted. People can still watch it for later. Uh, you know, but it's really important because we never understand how much people are going through similar things we've gone through, right? And that's why I encourage Christians, whenever you get out of a situation, to share your testimony because you never know who you could touch. If we think about the Bible, the Bible is basically a living testimony, you know, of a lot mm. of people who went through a lot of different things from David, you know, yeah. to Saul, to other disciples, you know, uh, the persecution of the disciples. A lot of Christians today are going through persecutions, right? Um, a yeah. lot of Christians are going through unworthiness today. You know, whenever they sin and make mistakes, that happened to David. You read Psalms, you see a lot of David's prayers and cries to God because he committed some big time sins, right? But God always forgave. And for me, when I look at the Bible, the Bible, my dad made a funny analogy. He said it's biblical instructions for before we leave earth. And he also said that the Bible is literally like almost like a story, a reality story of man trying to live life without God, but God continually interfering and saving mankind. 
That's what it is. If you read the Bible, you'll see, man, always try to do it the wrong way. They always try to do it the wrong way. Always try to do it the wrong way. And they failed every time, every single time. But God was always there, right? Always there to lift them up. So, Jesse, your story, your testimony was um, powerful. And I believe it's going to bless some people that are able to watch it. And I just want to also encourage someone to, you know, one thing you said, how the things we are doing in our present is what brings us back to our past. You know, someone might be involved you know, maybe you have a porn addiction or a drug addiction, right? And it was in your past and you got away from it. But like going back to your vomit, if you pick up that pornography again, or if you pick up that drug again, that brings you back to your past because of a, of a present decision that you made, right? Mm -hmm. And I said this all the time. I say in my prayer group, sometimes the greatest deliverance you can have is yourself. And it's not saying you can deliver yourself, you can deliver yourself. What, what we're saying here is that Deliverance sometimes can be a decision. There might yeah. be spiritual things in your life that might require extra prayer to break them. But like, if you want to decide, okay, I want to be set free from something. Like you said, pastors can lay hands and they can do whatever. But if you go back Amen. home at the end of the day and re re uh, replay and do the same things, then the prayers were futile. So I want to encourage you guys that are struggling. Maybe you're a Christian. You feel like I'm struggling and, and, and I don't want to build a relationship with God and, and things are tough. You know, the beauty of it is when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's not rocket science. It's not something you need to go through a whole process, right? It's very easy. Um, and when you begin to understand who God is, and like you said, when you begin to understand what God did for us, what was Jesse saying when he said that? He's talking about the cross, right? He's talking about Jesus on the cross. When you begin to understand yeah. what he did for us and, and how powerful it was because of where we actually deserved to go, you will understand your purpose. You will understand what you need to do and you will understand your calling and what is the what is every christian's purpose the bible says go ye into the world and preach the gospel that is the number one purpose how you do it is how god will lead you not everyone's a pastor not everyone's in deliverance ministry not everyone's this you know some people are influencers in their sports some people are influencers in 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 within their classrooms or their field of work you know wherever god can use you wherever you can spread the gospel is up to you how you do it and being led by god so I just wanted to encourage that, Jesse. Um, if you have any, you know, final words you want to say uh, to anyone watching, um, you can go ahead. Just, you know, what advice would you give uh, to the believers watching and to the young Christians? Like, what advice would you give to those that are struggling, you know, with certain situations in their life right now? Okay. Whew. It is, it is trouble in my ear because the echoes keep coming back, so I need to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very listening to you very well. So, everybody that you're watching, do you have a headphone? I don't. I don't. I know. I know. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's never happened before, so I don't understand where where this is coming from. The enemy is a liar. I think I, he knows. He knows that 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 trick with my mind. Mm -hmm. But the message we go through. So everybody that you are watching. Let me take this one thing out. This is what I want you to understand. I want to repeat this again. Your past isn't the problem because God has gave you a new life the day that you gave your life to him. Let me say one more time. Your past it is not the problem that you're present. It is this way right now. Because so many times, believer, we believe that it is our past that is chasing us. Mm -hmm. We believe that it is probably like our aunt, our uncles, and all those things. It's, 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 uh, it's holding us in a, in, 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 for us to go in our future. But let me tell you one thing. The day that you decided to give your life to Christ, God's word says that when you come to Christ, your old life is passed away. Now, that word pass away, meaning your past is still around somewhere else. If you want to know how your past is somewhere else, step out of your house and look at people that they are living your life. Hmm. 
Wow. If you want to know that your past is out there, that you can go back to your past any time that you want, and God will never stop you. All you just got to do, take that tablet and type porn. You're going to start watching it again. If you want to know your past is out there, just go take a cigarette, start smoking. It will feel good. Sin, it is good. If you want to know that your past is out there, just go out there. You're going to do it again. But let me tell you this. It is not because you are doing the things of your past, but it is the, the same thing that you used to do in your past, the same mistakes, the same way you used to be lazy, the same way you used to be, oh, I don't care, ignorant, the same way you used to do things in the past, it is the same way you are doing things even when you accept the name of Jesus Christ. So the moment that you change your, your way, the way you used to do things in the past, let's say this, you know that back in the day, for you to be able to go start watching that porn, you need to start watching a movie that deals with sex. And so you know that in the past, that, that is what I used to do. It used to lead me to porn. But when you come to Christ, why are you still watching the same movies? Now you start praying against spirit. No, 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 no. Everything, it is not Satan. He's pushing you. It, the Bible says sin comes within. We give the enemy the opportunity to come and to be activated. You give your past the opportunity to come and to be activated. So you got to watch the movie that you are watching that have, doesn't have to do with sex sin because you know after you sleep you're gonna start having dreams about having sex with women in your dream you know that uh, 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 back in the day for you to be able to start doing drugs there was uh, uh, this pill that you used to take for pain that it was bringing you back in to do drugs but when you come to Christ you still take the same pill and you wonder why you keep going back there. That's why I want to encourage someone today. When you change your ways of thinking, your way of doing things right now in the present, we will have a bunch of Christians that are completely set free and free in you. We will have Christians that they don't complain about the past. We will have Christians that do, they will not complain about what they, the step that has done to them. We will not complain about Christian that it, it, it was because of what that happened that it keep holding me back. Because let me tell you, when you keep saying those things is holding you back, you never understand the power of Jesus Christ. And then I want to encourage someone, understand that your present matters what you're gonna do tomorrow it's what you are doing today that's why god asked moses what do you have in your hand and i want to ask someone today what do you have in your hand that you can use to destroy the kingdom of satan if my life is the way it is today I never use the word that I'm, I'm not perfect because that's not the word of a Christian to use. I don't use that word. I say, I am a saint. I am holy because God says I am holy. I am holy not because of my work. I am holy because of the work of the Holy Spirit. So the word perfect is not in my vocabulary. It's not in my calendar. It's not in my, my life. So I want to encourage you tonight. Whatever that you are going through, understand this. I want you to catch this. If you, 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 you place this in your life, your life will never be the same. Understand this. Everything that I'm doing in my present, it is, it matters. The way I am talking in my present, it will not bring me back to that anger that I used to have. The way I am acting right now, it won't bring me back to the things that I used to do. Pray to God right now. And I just want to pray if that's good.
Yep. Uh, usually, God will give me a word to prophesy, but I want to I wanna keep that, use my wisdom, <laughs> and so God is good. But this is what I want to pray, because I know a lot of you that are watching right now, okay, a lot of you are watching right now are going through things that I probably I am talking about right now. I just want to remind you that you're not worse. You are not worse. You are, you are not done. God has something to do with you still. It's not too late. If you are homosexual, I'm telling you, it's not too late. If you are bisexual, I'm telling you, I am the one. You can come to me. Come to me. I will talk to you. I will be your friend because I understand what you are going through. If you are, uh, 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 whatever that you are, if you're doing drugs and you want to serve God, this is opportunity. You are looking to that person. You are looking to a person that been through that. If you, 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 anything that you are doing, drinking, alcohol, crazy, I'm telling you, it is not too late. Come to God. And when God will reveal who you truly are, you find your identity in Christ, your life will never be the same. Heaven, Father, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want everybody to just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Like, kind of kind of like place your hand, uh, kind of like with my hand, just on your phone, um, your laptop, whatever that you're watching. Just place your hand this way. So as I'm praying, I'm truly believing that God is doing something so powerful right now. In the name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus Christ. Father, you send me here for a purpose. You send me here, Father God, for a purpose. So, Father, I pray as by the sound of my voice, Father, that you are setting those who are captives free in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, those who are struggling, those who still live in sin, but they are serving you, Father. I pray that you reveal yourself to them like never before. Father, I pray for a woman now. I pray for a woman, Father God, that she is in a relationship that is not godly. Father, I pray that you give her a wisdom how to get up from that abused relationship. Father God, I pray for a man that he is in a relationship that is not worshiping your name. Father, I pray that you give them wisdom to get out from that relationship and to serve you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we I pray you that you give them strength to overcome every circumstance, to overcome the power of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you show them the way. It's all about you, Jesus. For it is not about my testimony, but it is about your testimony. It is not about what I've been through, but it is about what you've been through. What I am going through, it is the stuff that you say we will go through, it, Father. So you understand what they are going through. And now I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Take them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Take every spirit out in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel the plan of satanic over the life. I cancel the spirit of satanic over someone's life right now. Some of that you are practicing satanic. You are practicing something I'm hearing voodoo. I pray that you will be canceled in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Every satanic uh, uh, activity, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. 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 That was powerful. Thank you so much. Um, I hope everyone that watched, like I said, it's going to be reposted. You can watch us again. Thank you for sharing, Jesse. That was uh, definitely a lot of information, a lot of um, knowledge, a lot of testimony um, that you shared. And it's really a testament of what God has done to your life for you to have the courage to even want to come and to speak in front of us. So I, so I just commend you for that. And I pray that God will continue to use you and to bless you and to uplift you. I'm sure everyone this this chat was blessed. Our Jesse said, if you are struggling with any of the things that he noted and you're looking for a certain type of guidance or just what to say, whatever, you can message him. 
right? He's got, he's, he's got time Amen. for sure. Um, I'm available. He's available. So you guys definitely can reach out to him. You can follow his Facebook. Um, he does a lot of Facebook lives where he just, you know, talks the truth. So you can always see, you know, what he's about. Um, and he's someone that, you know, I've, I've come to for many different things in my life. So, Jess, we appreciate you yeah. big time. Thank you guys for tuning in uh, to another episode of Youth and Fellowship Testimonial Thursdays. We'll be back actually tomorrow. You just have your Thursday, but we have a special guest tomorrow as well. We're going to do two this week. So I'll be posting the details for that, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Jesse, thank you again. I really appreciate you. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, my brother. Like, it, 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 it's a blessing to be here. And thank you to everybody that uh, you were watching. And um, may God bless you. And um, I just love you all. I love you all. You don't hesitate to message me. We're going to pray together. I'll be there. Uh, I'll be everything that I can, what God has given to me to pour out in your life. May God bless everybody. Again, my brother, thank you. I really no problem. No life. problem. Thank you. The, the live will be posted for anyone that wants to rewatch it. Thank you, Jesse. Yes. God bless. Goodbye.